Good morning, evening, or night, everybody. I am Jax, and in this video, we are going to be looking at all of the hidden stats, Splatoon 2 tracks, how useful they really are, and what benefit they could have to the casual and competitive communities alike. First, I'll just go over what the game tracks and actively shows you, then I'll go over what the game tracks and hides from you. Then I'll wrap up with a little discussion on what is actually useful out of all these statistics and why more advanced statistics matter for Splatoon and what they could contribute to the community. So first off, I'm just going to go over the stats that the game tracks and readily shows you in-game and on the mobile app Splatnet 2. The game tracks your level, including how many times you've been to level 99 and reset to level 1 the amount of turf you have inked for each weapon in the game, the amount of turf you have inked for an inkling character and an octoling character, the amount of wins you have on every single weapon in the game, your freshness bonus for each weapon, aka your win streak and turf war for the weapon, the current ranking you have for each month that you have played 10 matches, the current top player for the weapon you chose to play in each mode, for every month that you have completed 10 matches. The win rate for every single mode on every single map, including an average win rate for the map, all of your Splatfest rankings and wins, your highest twin and quad ranking, the amount of medals you have received in twins and quads, which basically just mean that you placed in the top 5, 20, or 50% of people playing that rotation respectively, resulting in a gold, silver, or bronze medal your single player completion percentage and fastest completion times for every single stage and every single weapon, how many disconnects you've had in a given period, the average amount of splats, assists, specials you've had for the last 50 matches, your win and loss total for the last 50 matches, the score, time elapsed, splats, assists, deaths, and number of specials for all eight players in every lobby you have played for the last 50 matches, also, the exact time and date that the match started, how long it took, and the power level of the lobby for each of your last 50 matches. The game also tracks the gear and weapons you've worn and played with in chronological order on the selection screen, and they also display that, what you have used in the Splatnet 2 app as well. The game also displays a relatively large amount of salmon run stats, including your golden power egg and Grizzco point totals, the amount of jobs you have attempted and completed in Splatnet shows you the waves you've completed, the type of wave, the specials you use during that wave, the bosses you have defeated, whether you defeated all the bosses in the waves that they appeared, and how many crew members you have revived, and your three crewmates have revived in your last 50 jobs in Salmon Run. Now, I covered these stats in Splatnet 2 in detail in a previous video. I'll link that one down in the description. Now, outside of these statistics and the Salmon Run ones, Splatoon 2 does not openly display any other statistics, but that doesn't really mean it doesn't track any others. The game mentions a multitude of incredibly detailed and important statistics that are really only available in one spot, Tentakeel Outpost in Octo Canyon. And how do you access them? By interacting with Callie and Marie. And you kind of have to hope that they mention Agent Force Factopedia and whatever statistic follows. It's completely random what you get to see, and most of the time you probably won't get more than three or four in a visit before you exhaust all their dialogue, but you can refresh their dialogue by leaving and re-entering Octo Canyon, as you will see in the footage that is the background of this video. However, certain stats will almost never appear if you don't fill out some certain prerequisite to fulfill them. Obviously, Callie and Marie are never going to tell you what charger you use in your charger statistics if you never use charger weapons. But now that we've covered all of the statistics that the game actually tracks and shows you readily, let's go over the avalanche of statistics that you can get from Callie and Marie. I'm going to break these up into two categories, those being Salmon Run and Non-Salmon Run statistics, and we will start with the Non-Salmon Run statistics first. So, get ready. Callie and Marie can tell you your best win rate for any type of battle and the highest win rate you have on a map, 
the amount of times you picked up the Rainmaker in the last 50 matches, how many points you've scored while picking up the Rainmaker in the last 50 matches, how many times you've dunked the Rainmaker in the last 50 matches, how many times you've fallen off the map in the past 50 matches, what map you've fallen off the most of the past 50 matches, how much you open your map per minute in the last 50 matches, how long you look at your map when you open it every time you open it in your last 50 matches, the average amount of times you've used your sub weapon per minute in the past 50 matches, the record number of times you've used a sub weapon in a match in your past 50 matches, how many people you've splatted inside of the zone in the past 50 matches, how many times you've been splatted inside the zone in the past 50 matches, your longest splat streak without dying in your past 50 matches, the number of times you've super jumped in the past 50 matches, the number of times you've been splatted directly after super jumping in your past 50 matches, the average number of claims you've grabbed per match in your past 50 matches, the average number of power claims you've created per match in your past 50 matches, the weapon you've most been splatted by in your past 50 matches, your most used shooter, the average amount of time per minute you spent firing a shooting weapon in your past 50 matches, your most used slosher, the percentage of sloshers that hit opponents on the same level as you, the percentage of your sloshes that hit opponents above or below you, your most used roller, the percentage of your attacks that are horizontal swings, the percentage of your attacks that are vertical swings, your most used charger, your percentage of hits to misses with fully charged shots, your most used dually, the average number of rolls you execute per minute, your most used splatling, the average amount of time you spent shooting per minute with a splatling, the average amount of time you spend standing with a full charge splat link per minute, your most used blaster, the percentage of your hits that are directs, the percentage of your hits that are indirects, your most used brella, the average number of times you open your brella per minute, the number of times it's been broken in your past 50 matches, your most used brush, the number of times you swing your brush per minute, the total distance you have inked in terms of Marie's height, the amount of times you've had low ink in the past 50 matches, the number of ink tanks you've used in the past 50 matches, the number of times you've been splatted with a full special gauge in the past 50 matches, the average number of splats in the last 30 seconds of turf war that you've had in the past 50 matches, the average number of times you've died in the last 30 seconds of turf war in your past 50 matches, the average amount of time you've spent riding the tower in the last 50 matches, the average number of opponents you've splatted that are riding the tower in the past 50 matches, the average number of times you've spent submerged in ink in the past 50 matches, the longest amount of time in a single segment you've spent submerged in your own ink in the past 50 matches, and the number of comeback victories you've had in a each mode in your past 50 matches. It'll only display the one in which you have the most comeback victories, though. Now we'll get on to the salmon run statistics. The game will tell you the salmonid or boss salmonid you have died to the most. It'll pick whatever is the It'll pick whatever is leading that category. The average number of times you have rescued your teammates in a salmon run per job in your past 50 jobs. The average number of times your teammates have revived you in your in salmon run per job in your last 50 jobs. The record for the most power eggs you've ever had on a job. The record for the most golden eggs you've ever had on a job. The most killed boss that you have personally killed in your past 50 jobs. The total amount of jobs you have worked in your lifetime play and how many enemies you have killed in your past 50 jobs. It will give you a random enemy almost every single time you get this statistic. And I think that is everything. Now let's break down out of all of that what is actually useful and what isn't. I would say most of them are relatively useful to some degree. The most useless ones are probably how many times you fall off the map and your most used weapon of each class, mainly because you kind of know what you use more than others and falling off the map really isn't that big of a deal. Every other stat gives you a pretty decent idea of an important metric, metrics that should be available outside of this dialogue exchange, but we'll get to that. Now this information can really help you see improvement, especially in objective play. For example, if you pick up and make more power clams and pick up more clams in general, there's a potential that you're going to score more. And if you score more, there's a potential that you're going to win more. It's the same with riding tower for longer amounts of time and splatting more people while they're riding the tower, or grabbing the rainmaker and scoring more points with the rainmaker, or getting splats in the zone and avoiding dying in the zone. The tangible stats that the game can show you can show that you're either good at objective, mediocre, or bad. And I wish these stats were more readily available and I would love even more objective statistics. Now, the stats that do give you a good look at objective play can be kind of meaningless if you're a really aggressive player or you take on a slayer role on your team because you that's not your job. If you're a slayer, your job is to just splat people and make room for objective players. So those stats might be kind of meaningless to you because, well, that's not what you do. But for players who do, it's really, really important. You can see how many times you've dunked the Rainmaker, how much you carry it, how much you ride the tower, how many clams you're picking up and scoring, and if you're actually dying in the zone or not. But 
most of the other stats show relatively interesting aspects of gameplay, like the sub-weapon statistics, which show you that you can spam bombs a ton or that you don't really utilize your sub-weapon that much. Super jumps too, those stats show that you could be too skittish and you jump out way too much, or that you don't jump out at all, which means you probably die a bunch. The streak statistics show that you have really good survival ability or you don't. If your longest active splat streak is like two, then that's really not very good. The map opening and map viewing statistics show if you're really utilizing one of the most important tools that you have at your disposal. If you're opening your map one time per minute and you only view it for half a second, then you're not really getting a ton of information out of that. And the map gives you a ton of different information that you can sift through. So. You can really work on your awareness by saying, okay, I need to open my map more and look at it for just a smidge longer, and you'll probably see some improvement in your awareness. The weapon statistics also offer some insight into how you use them. The slosher stats show if you use your height advantage. Obviously, sloshers do better than other weapons when they're above or below their opponents, so if your percentage of being above or below and hitting people is higher, then you're probably doing better with slosher than the average player. The shooter, brush, and splatling statistics show that you're actively using your weapon in painting, which is good. That's what you're supposed to do with those weapons. They're some of the best painting weapons in the game. So if your stats on those are relatively low, then you know that you're not playing them actively and you probably need to do that more. The roller has a relatively unique statistic. It kind of just shows which swing you prefer more, but it could also indicate that you play a specific style. If you're using your horizontal swing a bunch, that could mean that either you're not really good at doing vertical swings, you don't get the timing down, or that you spend a lot of time in which you need to use your horizontal swing, so you're probably in more closer range. But if you use your vertical swing more, maybe you're using a weapon like Flings or a Dynamo where the vertical swing is arguably the better swing. It has more paint and has better range and sometimes better damage. The blaster and the charger statistics are pretty straightforward, probably the most straightforward ones. They show accuracy. Are you hitting shots? Are you missing them? So if you say, I want to get better and more accurate at blaster, you play 50 matches and check your stats, and then play another 50, and if they got better, then you're more accurate. Brella and Dually kind of just show if you're using all the tools that the weapon has at its disposal. If your Dually statistics show that you only roll once every minute of a match, then what are you doing? The dually is meant to be rolling around the map all the time. You need to be using your rolls as much as you possibly can. It's the same with Brella. You need to be using the shield to its fullest capacity. So if your stats and those are low, then you can look at them, play a bunch of matches with an, that active change in mind, and then see if you actually improved if the stat got better. All of these stats do give you evidence of just plain matter of fact, but they can indicate how you play, how you don't, or how you should. They can inform ways to improve or at least tighten up your weak spots. None of them will lead to direct improvement unless you utilize them in that way. For example, if I jump out four times over 50 matches, either I'm really really good at staying alive or I never jump out and just die a bunch. So if I make the active choice that I'm going to jump out more in scenarios where I probably should, and then I see an increase in the amount of times I've jumped out in the last 50 matches, but I've also played better, then, well, that stat showed me that I'm playing better because I improved that aspect of my game. I'm playing safer and I'm jumping out when I need to. Jumping out is almost always better than dying, by the way. You don't lose special, you can immediately jump back into a teammate or a beacon, and it's faster than having to wait to respawn for 8 seconds. Unless you're using respawn, of course, but if you're using quick respawn and that's activated, you probably already died a bunch, so, you know, whatever. Now, the more of these stats that are available, the better off the player themselves is going to be, as they have more information at their disposal to educate themselves on what they need to improve on. I would say... Splatoon 3 should implement even more statistics. I would really like to see a sort of weakened but not splatted stat. Essentially like how in baseball they have a runner stranded stat, meaning that the offense couldn't really capitalize on when they had players in the opportunity to score, but if you translated that to Splatoon, if you weaken somebody but you don't splat them, you had the opportunity to splat them, you just let them get away or died yourself. So a 
really, really high rate of weakened but not splatted would show you that you're not getting as many kills as you should. Or it could indicate that maybe you're just letting people escape. Maybe you're getting beat in your engagements. And then you, you that leads you to think about, okay, why am I getting beat in my engagements? Why can people escape? And that could lead to you adjusting how you play and playing better. And if you see a change in that statistic after you make a change to your play, well, then that's direct proof that you've probably improved. Now, obviously, it's difficult to show something like accuracy for all the weapons, but at least some sort of accuracy statistic for all of them would be relatively nice. Obviously, you can have the accuracy statistic that Blaster and Charger has for weapons like shooters, since... Shooters fire many shots the entire course of the match, and half of those shots are probably not even at other players, because painting is so important in this game. If I'm using sploosh matic and I'm just painting the map the entire game, my accuracy's probably going to be 0%, or close to it. And how do you even track something like that? Do you count every single time a bullet is fired in the radius of a player? I don't really know, but... Regardless, some sort of accuracy statistic should be included for at least a decent amount of these weapons. Roller would be a better one since each swing is is much easier to quantify compared to each shooter's singular bullet or shooting for a, a continuous second. Like, roller is much easier to do, especially blaster and charger as well. But I would also say having some height statistics like Slosher has for every weapon would also be pretty useful. It could indicate that a player tends to engage when they have an advantage or disadvantage. Most of the time in Splatoon, being below someone is a disadvantage. Being above them is an advantage, and being on neutral ground is, well, neutral. Granted, there are cases where it's an advantage to be below people, like if you're using a roller and sharking, and sometimes it's a disadvantage to be above people, like if you're using a slosher, since the vanilla slosher does less damage when you're above people. But... Overall, a statistic that shows how many of your attacks are hitting at, at certain heights could show that you tend to engage with people who are in adva advantageous positions and disadvantageous to yourself, and that you need to reevaluate how you interact and how you engage with enemies. Now, I would also say a statistic that would be really interesting to see in Splatoon 3 is some sort of map positioning and movement statistic, showing which zones of the map that you tend to focus on a ton, or that you're in a lot. This idea kind of brought back memories of Nintendo Land on the Wii U and Mario Chase. If you've never played that game, you're essentially just a me dressed up in a Mario costume, and the computer or your friends who are dressed up as Toads just chase you around a big map. And then at the end, if you get caught or last a certain amount of time, it shows everybody's movements on the map over the course of the game. This would be a great feature if it was applied to Splatoon. You could view who was where the entire game. So if you get flanked and you didn't see it at all, you could see, oh, this is when they flanked, I should have seen that coming. Or if you had a really great push with your team, you could see this is why it was successful. Everybody went their own way or we teamed up in certain areas. It would also be really good for tournaments and VOD reviews because you could see what works and what doesn't and it allows you to easily highlight certain points of matches. It also allows you to improve upon your poor choices. If all four of your teammates split up and went separate ways and got picked off all on their own, then you want to team up next time, and having some sort of movement feature statistic would be really good for that. Granted, a replay function would essentially cover this, but since there's no replay function in Splatoon or Splatoon 2, I really hope it's in 3. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. The stats that are available through Callie and Marie are really, really nice to have, and they're definitely important stats, but I would say... They're a really weird way of accessing them combined with the RNG of getting a stat that you want and the fact that they're only based on the past 50 matches for the majority of them make them kind of more of a fun gimmick and side dialogue thing than actual useful and meaningful statistics for improvement. I really hope Splatoon 3 has these type of stats and the similar statistical tracking of information like this, but that it is much, much more easily found, categorized, accessed, and viewed. Having some sort of tab on the main menu, a la the stage rotations tab, would be really, really good for Splatoon 3. 
Granted, I can understand why these stats are just shoved away in Octocanon through Callie and Marie and not put on the main menu or something, because they could overwhelm newer or younger or inexperienced players who think, what do all these stats mean? Am I missing out on something? And they could get overwhelmed and just decide not to play. But also including some sort of message that says these are optional advanced statistics that have no impact on gameplay other than just showing you some info about the game would be helpful in sort of making sure that newer and younger and inexperienced players didn't get really overwhelmed by this information. But overall, these statistics do help players improve, and they could help players improve, which would benefit competition in tournaments. More statistics also allows for more storylines to be crafted, especially in tournament settings. And players also have some sort of quantified skill set data that they can show outside of just X rank. If I'm applying for a team and I'm an objective player and I want to show that I'm an objective player, then these stats are pretty great for that. I can show that, hey, I pick up the Rainmaker this many times in my last 50 matches, I dunk it at this rate, I score a ton of points with this, I ride tower this much, you can see it right here, I don't die in the zone, but I get a lot of kills in the zone, and I pick up and create a bunch of power clams and regular clams. That sort of information is kind of vital, but because of the fact that it's really kind of hard to access and completely random, it ends up just falling to the wayside. I would say the more information like this that's at a player and a community's disposal, the better off the community and the player are going to be as this information informs all of your decisions. This, these statistics can inform what decisions you make in between games, in between matches, sets, or tournaments. They can also influence people's choices about the meta, their weapons, players, what teams they want to scrim, how tournaments are seeded, the list goes on and on. A good example of this and how it could impact a game like Splatoon 3 is what if a new sub weapon, like how Fizzy Weapon when it was launched, was just really, really good and really powerful. These sub weapon statistics, which show how often you use it per match, could be shown that this thing being spammed a ton means that it's probably pretty good. And if it's being spammed a ton and people are winning a bunch, that could lead the dev team to look at those stats and be like, okay, we need to tone this down. The statistic informs the decision. That's basically what I'm trying to get at. The more stats you have that are meaningful, the more information you can use to educate yourself and make active changes in your gameplay to become better at the game. This hard data gives verifiable, undeniable proof that something is working or isn't. Like I said before, if I'm trying to get better at jumping out of scenarios that I think that I usually die in, I can look at how many times I currently jump out. Let's say it's 4 in 50 matches, and I say, I need to get that number up. Then I think, okay, in scenarios where I would usually not jump out, I'm going to jump out. And I do that, and I perform better, and then I check the stat, and I've jumped out more. That proves that that change was valid, and it led to improvement. That's basically what I'm trying to say. And also, more stats would also just lead to better competition. People always want a higher number or a better number than other people. That's the main reason people still play ranked in Splatoon 2 to begin with. I can see people competing over win rates and making sure that their win rate is super, super high and bragging to other people about it. And that's honestly just all in good fun and better for the game overall because people are, especially with win rates, people would find more optimal strategies to win on every single mode in every single map. These stats and how they can inform your decisions is just part of a larger discussion in how sp improvement in Splatoon and many competitive video games in general can be relatively difficult, especially in the shooter genre. A lot of games don't really have detailed personal statistics like some of these hidden stats, so it's really hard to show tangible improvement and get tangible stats that can help inform that improvement. Splatoon kind of falls into both categories of it does have these stats and they can use to be improved, but they're so weird and hard to access that it's too much effort, but I'll save the conversation for improvement in Splatoon for a future video that I'm working on. Obviously, this statistical topic will play a, a role in that video, but again, it's for a future video. And I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. The more stats that are available, the more information you can use to educate active changes in your gameplay, and then you can 
compare that to those stats to see if you've actually improved. Splatoon 2 does have a lot of stats, and they hide a lot from you. Or they at least try to. Thing. Let me know if I missed anything, or if you learned about a stat you didn't know the game even tracked. And comment down below what your favorite stat that the game tracks is. Please make sure to obliterate that like button and demolish subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. I'm going to try to get a weekly upload schedule out relatively soon, so follow me on Twitter at Jex4 for when I inevitably post that, and other content updates, memes, and other goofs that I come up with. And as always, I'm Jex. Have a good one.